Here's a quick snippet on uh, splicing cable for MC4 connectors. A lot of times in a solar power situation, they, they like you to use these little Y branch line connectors for uh, getting multiple panels onto the same cable. The problem is that with the, uh, the 10 and 12 gauge um, cable that a lot of times come with a solar panel, you can very quickly, once you're getting to multiple panels, you very quickly get into overdoing the amperage that should be going through that wire compared to what, what your to total panel is going to produce and what those little connectors are capable of carrying without building up some resistance. Now when a wire is built up resistance, you got two problems. One, less electricity makes it through, which means that all that money you spent on uh, panel capacity and storage it gets a little bit wasted. The other problem is that the connectors can heat up build up uh, a little bit of a soot or corrosion and then and then the resistance gets even worse so among several ways we we keep that from happening is our main our main lines the way i i wire stuff up i like to use this uh, number four six and eight cable for main lines and then i take the skinnier lines and i i, I attach them to it like, you know, this is, I think, a number 10 cable here. It comes off of one of the 145-watt solar panels. Uh, you'll see as thin as number 12 line coming off of, uh, you know, like, 50-watt solar panels, stuff like that. And then you got the little little car stereo speaker cord or power cord you'll see on, like, 15-watt Harbor Freight panels. What I do is I try to never cut the main thick line that goes to your stuff. And I get a lot of connection. Now with this, what I've done is I, I laid the long piece. Uh, we, we lay that right on here. And, uh, oops, all right, so here we go. Kind of lay that thing here and then start wrapping. Wrap it really tight, squeeze it tight. Now what I did on some of the ones on this other line here was once I did my wrapping, and my squeezing, I uh, I hit it with some solder, and then and then double taped it, triple taped it. It's not optimum. There there's companies that when you want the MC4 connectors on stuff, what you do is you send in all your measurements, and they'll make a cable for you. Uh, kind of expensive that way. And if you hire an electrician or somebody to do an installation in your place. Uh, it, the cabling can be a big issue because uh, if it's homemade cable like I'm doing here, it's it's probably not going to be as efficient as, as com commercially made. But a lot of that has to do with the, the thickness and gauge of the cable we're putting in. If a guy goes cheap and starts using super skinny cable, then what happens is you're you're actually not going to be producing all the electricity you want on your system. And you're not producing and keeping the amount of electricity that your system is capable of doing. If you go too thick, well, you waste the money on extra cable. The other thing you can run into if you go too thick on the cable is that um, the plugs and the connectors on the charge controllers can only handle cables up to a certain thickness depending on the make and model of the charge controller. So that's another little issue you got to look out for. So usually number six cable is about as big as you'll go, four sometimes. If you get thinner lines going to a particular panel, that's not necessarily all that bad. It is what I call a capillary effect. Um, just like you got those inch thick power lines that can come to, uh, come to your property, it doesn't mean you need an inch thick power line that's going to be going on a... Uh, uh, you know, going to your TV set or something like that. The, the less amperage, less... less uh, power that a particular device is going to use or give coming or going, the, the less thick its cable needs to be. It's just that when you're talking about from your main array and connecting all your branch lines, I really prefer to have a baseline that's a little thicker than the branch lines. And that's why I don't necessarily like using a whole lot of those Y connectors on a situation. So like what I built there is that's set up to take five panels um, I splice it into some old welding cable, which maybe not the best thing to do, but the thing is I, I like the idea that that's a multi-strand cable that's easy to uh, move around and it's flexible. Although i got to do some uh, resistance testing because that was used cable. And if there's any splits or cuts in it, we can have a problem. 
and what I did on this cable here on the other end where the splices are is I made it the green and the white which are traditionally negatives uh, and then a black and a red which are traditionally positive so when you're doing this kind of thing strip it way back have a lot of metal to metal connection you're, you're not, we're not trying to save pennies uh, in losing dollars and so what happens is my positive load is actually being carried through two cables all those in an insulator between them what should be happening is that if one of them builds up a little resistance the electricity just kind of automatically flows through the one with less resistance and so we've got two 12 gauge cables combined um, probably equals like a, a, a 9 gauge or something like that kind of hard to tell it's it's there's some math formulas for that kind of thing um, same with the negative you know and we're going to use the same thickness on both but this one's going to take some testing and we may end up cutting it and, and not using it but with the baseline cable what I did here I built this to optimize the system with an absolute minimum of any possible loss on there. Um, again, you could buy some stuff that's that's got the pre-made branch lines. It can be really nice, but for our application, we can't afford it. And most of the money for this particular project has gone into the panels. Uh, so I'm I'm splicing and working with a lot of other cables here, and I think it's going to work out pretty well.